Crypt of the Necrodancer is a game being developed and published by Brace Yourself Games. And let me tell you, this game is insanity. Tell me if you heard this one before. A game that's a dungeon crawling, rogue element based rhythm game. Where you're only able to move and attack based on the rhythm of the music. Now what you're probably thinking is, this game better have a killer soundtrack. It does, times two. The original soundtrack is composed by Danny Baranowski. Baranowski? I don't know, I may be butchering that. If that name sounds familiar, if I didn't tear it to shreds enough, that's because this guy, just to name a couple of things that he's composed, he's done the music for Super Meat Boy and The Binding of Isaac. This game has an excellent soundtrack to say the least. But let's just throw it out there. Maybe you're insane. Maybe you don't like good music. You want to listen to your own crappy music. Well, they got you covered there too. You could upload your own music directly from your computer right into the game. So, and then you could actually separate it according to which level you want it on or whatever else. It's great, great feature, great feature, but personally I'd just rather keep with the uh, original soundtrack. Now let's get on to the second most prominent feature of this game, the difficulty. When they say hardcore, they mean it. This game is hard. But I will say that every mistake was my own. It wasn't the game killing me, it was me killing me. I got a little too anxious and jumped into a battle and didn't plan my moves out correctly or I screwed up the rhythm. It was all me. So it's based more on skill than it is about do you have everything unlocked, do you have all these cool items, do you have the best armor. It really doesn't have anything to do with that. In fact, any items you pick up in a dungeon, they disappear when you die. So you can't just keep going in with you know the super gear and beat your head against the concrete wall until you finally win. This is a situation where you actually have to skillfully gain items, get a little better, until you beat the level. That's not to say that there are no permanent upgrades in the game. It's handled a little differently than normal rogue games, where you get gold, you buy weapons, armor, permanent skill point upgrades, stuff like that. It's not like that at all. Instead, you have two different types of currency. You have gold and you have diamonds. Gold allows you to buy upgrades and also keys to release prisoners within the level itself. Diamonds, on the other hand, allow you to buy permanent upgrades. This is done in between levels or if you died and you go back to, to the lobby, as it's called. And it's this little level area where you actually have access to a few different merchants and you're able to use your diamonds to buy upgrades. These aren't the usual upgrades that, you know, increase your health or your armor. These actually increase the different drops in the level. So. For instance, that sword you got about a hundred times. Now you get a better version of it. Or maybe a spear or a whip. There's also spells in the game, but I honestly didn't have too much use of them because I couldn't get very far. I got stuck on the first level. I mean, the game's really hard and I suck. I did get to see the final boss at level 1 and he's badass as hell, but I ain't gonna spoil it. But going back to the weapons here, each weapon is not inherently better than the other. They each have their own use. Uh, not to spoil too many, but let's just throw the you know the first upgrade I ran into, which was the broadsword. The broadsword has a large sweep attack. It takes out three spaces in front of you, whereas the first weapon you get only does the space ahead of you. Now the broadsword would come in handy in uh, groups of enemies, but that first weapon you get actually does more damage to a single target. So then it becomes more about play style than the best weapon in the game. You know, do you feel better attacking in a sweeping attack? Do you feel better attacking diagonally? Do you feel better attacking in front of you and doing a lot of damage immediately? This allows a variety of playstyles among other players. You're not all going to play the same. Some may like the broadsword over the dagger, while others may feel that the dagger is better at taking out bosses. Let's look at the controls. The controls are up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, right arrow. That's it. So as you know, the controls are incredibly simple to get. You push in the direction of the monster to attack it, or you press a combination of the arrows to use specific items, and that's pretty much the gist of it. The controls are incredibly easy to grasp, there's no difficulty curve to it. Now let's get to my personal favorite feature of the game, local co-op. Yeah, the thing that's been sorely missing from thousands of games on a yearly basis? Yeah, they added it. And with that, based on the super simple controls, you're able to share a keyboard comfortably with whoever you're playing with. I mean, I'll be honest, I played a couple games with my girlfriend, and she kept dying. But, it was fun nonetheless. With the game that has a great soundtrack, simple controls, local co-op, you're probably asking what's wrong with it, right? And I'm happy to say, not much. I only noticed one issue in my entire gameplay, and I played for a couple hours. The title screen chugs along for some reason. 
I was dropping to 40 frames and the game's pretty simple to run. I'm not sure on the technical reasons on it, but I'm pretty sure it'll be fixed. You gotta remember, this game's still early access and it feels like a complete game already. In the week that I've had the game, they even fixed reused assets. So I can tell just by my experience that they're going to be very active in getting this game completed. Even though I still think it's pretty close to it as it is. If you're interested in buying this game, it's on Steam Early Access for $14.99. And I'm just going to say, this game is well worth the money. I mean, this is a game. There's no pre-order, there's no nothing like that going on here. This is a game that you can play now. The fact that it's early access only means that they're just going to add more stuff to it in the future. With that being said, remember to support your indie developers or else we'll be playing Call of Duty 36 in no time.